The 2022 World Cup is coming to an end and we now have finalists, Argentina and France. But before this final gets underway and one of those two nations are crowned champions of the world, I'm going to recap the last six matches. Starting off with the quarterfinals, Croatia played Brazil and beat them on penalties, surprising basically everyone. Now of course Croatia did get to the final of the last World Cup, but that was four years ago and with Brazil being one of the favourites to win the whole thing, I don't think many people expected them to be packing their bags after the quarterfinal. Now in terms of goals, not much happened in this match until pretty much the very end, but nonetheless this was a great match to watch and Brazil have more chances out of the two sides but Croatia's goalkeeper Lovakovic having a monstrous performance and pulling off 11 saves in this match. Brazil's goal came at the very end of the first half of extra time, with Neymar going around the keeper and scoring to go level Pele as Brazil's all-time top goal scorer and make it seem like they were on course to win this match and progress to the semi-final, as at this point in time, Croatia hadn't even had a shot on target yet. However, Brazil's European car struck once again, as in every single World Cup they've played in since the last time they won it back in 2002, they've lost against the first European side they faced in the knockout stage, and in the 160th minute of this match, Pekovic scored Croatia's one and only shot on target across the 20 minutes to level the game and take it to penalties. Once this game went to penalties, I kind of had a feeling Croatia would win it. Their goalkeeper's been on this tournament and was exceptional in this match, and he helped his side get one step closer to winning when he saved Rodrigo's penalty to make a 1-0 to Croatia in the penalty shootout. Croatia scored the next three penalties after this, whilst Brazil scored two, with their final penalty being taken by Marquinhos who hit the post, eliminating Brazil from the World Cup early on and seeing Croatia progress to the semi-final for a second consecutive World Cup. The Netherlands came up against Argentina and lost on penalties. This was one of the greatest matches of the tournament so far, and the only real downside to it was referee giving out way too many low cards, with 18 of them being shown in this match. Argentina dominated the early stages of this game and eventually got the opening goal in the 35th minute of the match, where Messi played through a great pass to Molina, who slotted the ball past the keeper. This put Argentina 1 0 up going into half time, and about half an hour into the second half, Messi scored a penalty to increase Argentina's lead to two goals, making it seem like the Netherlands stood a chance of coming back. However, the Netherlands didn't let them be two goals down with not long left to go demotivate them, and just 10 minutes after Messi scored from the spot, Wegos pulled one back for the Netherlands with a stunning header just a few minutes after being substituted onto the pitch. As good as this goal was, it wouldn't have meant anything if the Netherlands didn't push for a second, so that's exactly what they did. And 17 minutes later, at the very end of the 10 minutes of stoppage time added on, the Netherlands equalised the game for a genius free kick routine to shock Argentina, who probably thought they were going to win this game inside 90 minutes after they had scored those two goals. A period of extra time followed this, but neither side was able to score, meaning the game was decided by penalties. Emi Martinez, who seems to be an expert at saving penalties, saved the Netherlands' first two, and although Enzo Fernandez missed his, this didn't matter as Latoro Martinez buried his to help Argentina progress to the semi final where they took on Croatia. But before I recap that match, Let's look at the other quarterfinal ties. Morocco faced Portugal and beat them 1 0, making them the first African nation to reach a semi final World Cup, which is completely deserved. They've had a difficult run in this tournament, but have done very well. With them finishing the top of their group, which included previous World Cup finalists Croatia and second in the FIFA rankings Belgium, and then went ahead to beat Spain and now Portugal. Morocco didn't have much of the ball in this match, but despite this, they were able to score their only goal across 90 minutes, so then Naziri jumping up high and heading the ball before the keeper could claim it to put Morocco 1 0 up just for half time. There's still a long way to go in this match, and a one goal lead isn't exactly the most secure of leads, especially considering the fact. Portugal had scored six goals against Switzerland in their previous match. However, Morocco defended well like they have done all tournament and managed to hold on this one goal lead until the very end. Although holding on became much harder when Jadira, who had only been substituted on half an hour earlier, was shown two yellows in two minutes to put Morocco a man down with five minutes to go. This was a monumental win for Morocco. Not many people expected them to even get out of their group, so making it to the semi-final of the World Cup is a big achievement by them. For Portugal, though, this was a disappointing day. This was Ronaldo's last ever World Cup and his team went out early on in the quarterfinals. And what makes it even worse for him in particular is they never scored a goal in the knockout stage of the World Cup despite playing in five editions of the tournament. Moving on, England were up against France and lost 2-1. Now despite the loss, I honestly thought England were the better team across 90 minutes. However, unlike France, we didn't take our chances, which is no fault of ours. With that being said though, I think you also have to acknowledge that the referee in this game was absolutely abysmal, with him ignoring tons of fouls by the French players, with so their first goal literally coming from Saka being fouled, which gave France possession of the ball, and about 30 seconds after this, they scored. Now to give credit where credit's due, too many strike was unreal. However, I don't think it should have stood because of that foul on the build-up. England won able to find equalizer before half time, which put France 1-0 up at the break. However, 9 minutes into the second half, Harry Kane sent his Tottenham teammate who got the wrong way and scored from the spot, putting England and France on double terms. England searched for a second goal, which would have given them the lead after this, but Hugo Lloris saved a couple of their shots. And then, in the 78th minute, Olivier Giroud headed in a great cross by Griezmann, which proved to be the winner in this match. Harry Kane did have an opportunity to equalise the game through a penalty once again in the 84th minute. However, he skied it over the crossbar, which sealed England's fate. See how France progress to the semi final instead of England. Anyway, those were the quarterfinal ties, and the first of the two semi finals was Argentina versus Croatia, which Argentina. Argentina won 3-0. Argentina were expected to win this game and showed exactly why they were favourites to make it to the final then dominating Croatia this entire match. Lionel Messi has been unstoppable this tournament and got Argentina's first goal in this match, with him scoring a well-taken penalty to put his nation on course for their 6th World Cup final. 
22-year-old Julian Alvarez, who's also been really good at this World Cup, got their other two goals, with his first coming from him going on a brilliant solo run and ended it with a fantastic finish past the keeper to make it 2-0 going into half-time. Croatia had a mountain to climb if they were to make a comeback in the second half, but Argentina did just as well defensively in this game as they did offensively and were able to keep Croatia at bay, and in the 69th minute, Julian Alvarez secured the win for Argentina when he fired home Messi's pass to take them to the final and give them the chance to win their third ever World Cup. The other semi-final match was France vs Morocco, with reigning champions France beating Morocco 2-0. Going into this match, Morocco had only conceded one goal this entire tournament, and that was an own goal. However, it did take France long at all to become the first nation to have one of their players score against Morocco this World Cup, with Fio Hernandez opening the score in 5 minutes into this match when he was left unmarked, allowing him to volley in Mbappe's deflected shot to put France on track for a second consecutive World Cup final. Holding on to this one goal lead wasn't the easiest of the task for France, with Morocco having more possession in them and creating quite a few chances, including a bicycle kick which Hugo Lloris managed to save. However, despite the amount of chances Morocco were creating, France were able to maintain their one goal advantage and then, in the 79th minute, Carlo Morani scored 44 seconds after stepping onto the pitch to secure France a spot in the World Cup final, with this goal also making him the third fastest substitute to score a goal at the World Cup. Anyway, that's the World Cup quarter and semi-final recap. If you made it this far, enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and watch share, comment down below your opinions on any of these matches. With that being said, have a good one guys. See ya.